Thanks a lot, Vicki. It is the season of giving, and today you can give the gift of life. Today is the News Channel 5 blood drive at the American Red Cross, and our Tawanda Coleman is there now to give us more information on this important event. Hi, Tawanda. Hi, Meryl. Good morning. Good morning to everyone out there. We're hoping that you will come down today and be a holiday hero. You know, every two seconds, someone needs blood. And it's up to the American Red Cross to make sure that patients anywhere, whenever they need it, get the blood they need. So the staff just arrived. They're getting ready. Folks start arriving typically around 1130. So we're hoping that you will come down. We're going to be here throughout the day, encouraging you to give the gift of life. It is Giving Tuesday after all, and what better gift is there to give? This is a special time of the year for the American Red Cross because there's always fewer donors. And I want to talk to Tiffany Taylor, who's the communications manager here. And this is the time of year when you really encourage people to come out and donate blood. Why? That's right. Um, between Thanksgiving and New Year's, we tend to see a decline in blood donations due to holiday travel, um, engagements that people have. And so they tend to put donating blood last on their list and it, it tends to fall off. So we're hoping that a few holiday heroes will remember to place it top priority on their list today on Giving Tuesday and help us meet that need this holiday season. And you really make it easy for folks too, Tiffany. You can go online to their Rapid Pass app and do a little preliminary work and, and, and get registered to come in. And then it doesn't take long after that. It does, and it shaves off about 15 minutes off your total donation time when you um, answer those health history questions prior to with the Rapid Pass. So when you come in, you'll sign in, read a little information, um, go through our health history process, and then you'll donate. And that takes about 8 to 10 minutes for whole blood, and then you'll have some refreshments afterwards. So this area where we're standing in right now, this is your whole blood donation area? Yes, it is. And um, this is where when you give one pint of blood, you're able to help save up to three lives in this area. Wow, that's amazing. But there's other ways that you can give too. And we want to encourage you. We'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later, right, Tiffany? But we also want to show News Channel 5, if you come down today, it's going to be giving you some swag. Look at that. Here at the main Charlotte location. And uh, you'll have to come here to get these. You, they, there's seven other locations, but they won't have those there. Uh, and then also we've got these cute they look like ornaments but no they're actually ponchos rain ponchos so we got you covered rain or shine limited edition so you got to come here for that but there are seven other locations and you can always go online and find the information there but we're going to be here throughout the day we we'll hope you'll come down donate blood and help save a life thanks a lot Tawanda hey take a look at this our fashionable friend is featured in a new article in the Style Blueprint blog. Tawanda is modeling five items that you need in your closet to look great at holiday parties, and she looks amazing in all of them. You can go to styleblueprint.com to see the complete spread, and congratulations, Tawanda. She looks gorgeous. Still come on Talk of the Town, a holiday favorite dessert gets a keto makeover, and your guests will never know it's low carb. Plus, learn how to make holiday ornaments from your backyard greenery. That's still to come. This portion of Talk of the Town is sponsored by Publix. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Holiday ornaments can be found in a variety of places, including your own backyard. Melissa Sakura from A Village of Flowers is showing us how to make some ornaments from native plants. These are all things that a lot of us have in our own backyards, right? That's right. And yeah. if you have things you want to spruce up to, you can come to the flower shop and we have a lot of variety as well. So okay. if you find things in your yard, it can last all season. And then maybe add to it with a right. few things from the flower shop. Yes. I love that idea. All right, so you're going to show us how to make an ornament that could work great on a tree, on a gift, right. um, or just about anything. Yes, it's going to make it extra special. Okay. So we're going to layer some pine. Okay. Some olive. And we're going to start, I start with the longer pieces to make the base. And the, one of the tricks is to make different angles. So you add some texture and variety. Okay. Boxwood, we ha I have this in my yard, mm -hmm. looks really great. So once you get it to the size you'd like it to be. You want it to be a little bit fan shaped then, That's right? right? Just to yes. give it some, some depth. You'll fan it out. I love olive. And rosemary is a wonderful thing to grab out of your oh, yard. Yeah, that'd it be smells great. wonderful. So after you get it to the size you'd like it to be, you're going to wire it tightly together. Just regular floral wire. That's right. Works for that. 
I, we have these little hangers. You can do that out of twine or wire as well. You can wire that on. I think I wound my wire a little too tight. Oh, I need to, <laughs> need to make right. a little space we, to, to do my hanger. Yeah, and then we finish it off with ribbon. Every year I like to get a special ribbon that kind of freshens up my ornaments. Yeah. So this year we went with the plaid and we're gonna make a sweet bow where you can just tie it in a knot that kind of looks more modern. Oh, that's a good idea. All right. And Any tips on making a great bow? <laughs> I like to make the loops nice and even. So if you fluff them out wide after you get them, after you get your knot tight, you can flare out the, the wire. The wire makes it so much easier. Yeah. And then you can kind of fluff it up. There you go. Cool. And you can add, if you have pretty sparkle that you would like to add, you can wire that into your ornament or bells. Oh, that have, And these are just like little dollar store ornaments yeah. that you can get for, you know, I don't know, 12 for a dollar or something like that. That's right. That's cute. And you can make a larger one if you like want something for your front door. Yeah. Or oh, that's a good idea. Your mailbox. How long will these last? These should last a few weeks. If you keep them cold, like if this is outside, it's going to last longer, but three mm -hmm. weeks probably. So on through the season, if you're hanging it in your tree, it's going to dry really pretty. Cool. Look, look great. That sounds great. You're going to be demonstrating this and, and letting uh, families come and make these for free at a big event that's going on this weekend. That's right. This Saturday is the Hillsborough Village Holiday in the Village, and a lot of the merchants will have special stations. We have a do-it-yourself ornament station, so you can come. Anyone can come and make one for free. Fine. So it should be a lot of fun. Lots of good things going on. And that is in conjunction with the Holiday Lights Tour too. Yes, we're Tell excited to partner with the neighborhoods, the Hillsborough Village and West End neighborhoods for one of their great events of the year. It's the carriage rides where they're gonna look at the lights all through the neighborhoods. So all the, the residents have decorated their homes. Nice. And you can ride a carriage ride or you can ride a trolley. It's, it's a really, really wonderful, romantic and family friendly experience. I think so too. It sounds like it'd be a blast. And those homes are absolutely gorgeous the way they have them decorated. They are. Melissa, thank you. We thank appreciate you. you being with us. You can check out Melissa's holiday ornaments demonstration this Saturday at a Village of Flowers. And don't miss the holiday lights, carriage and trolley tours in Hillsborough Village this Saturday and Sunday. Get tickets and more information online at newschannel5.com. Now a little bit earlier I got a chance to see the lights and greenery over at Gaylord Opryland. Let's take a look. It's one of the most beautiful places in town to take a family photo for the holidays and there are so many other things to see and do once you're here at Gaylord Opryland for a country Christmas. Megan McDougall is the one who's responsible for making all the horticulture so spectacular here and it's quite a process isn't it? It is. I have a great team. They actually start in July putting up Christmas lights outside. So I have four horticulturalists starting in July then come October there's another eight that kind of join in on the lights and all in all, we end up putting about three million lights inside the resort. That is remarkable, both inside and out. Yes, inside and out. And then it actually takes until about March to take them down. So we're pretty much doing lights um, all year round between the checking and installing the lights. It's so worth it though. It is. It just makes it so beautiful. It is spectacular. And you can also take the carriage rides through our Magnolia um, entrance of the hotel and see it at night. And it's just uh, it's a wonderful sight to see. It's a fun thing too in the Delta for the kids. Yes, in the Delta, we have the Delta boat ride. Um, there's also the scavenger hunt throughout the property. And then you can just take um, in our poinsettia trees that we have one here in our magnolia lobby and then another one in the Delta. Since you're the horticulture expert, I gotta ask you about poinsettias. I have trouble keeping them alive. What do you do? Well, uh, poinsettia is actually a tropical plant. So it's originally from Mexico. So it does not like cold temperatures. So when you're carrying it from the store to your car or even into your house, you wanna make sure that it's covered, um, that the cold temperature does not um, you know, hurt the plants. But uh, on here on campus, we have around 15,000 poinsettias. Wow. And although we have our traditional red, we also have the whites, the burgundies, the orange spice, and then our speckled variegated varieties. We try to have something new that you can't normally buy at a local store. And they are gorgeous, a perfect place to take a photo. It is. Megan, thanks so much, and thanks for all your hard work that we could all enjoy now. We appreciate it. You're welcome. You can see it all at Gaylord Opryland, A Country Christmas. 
You're going to love today's recipe. Imagine a rich chocolate cake that tastes like a high carb sugary treat, but it's not. Angela Roberts from the Spinach Tiger blog created this Keto Texas sheet cake that's actually gluten free, sugar free, low carb, and it's perfect for the holidays. We are so yes. glad to have you. Thank you for having me. So, so Texas exciting. sheet cake is so delicious. Yes. Um, my Texas relatives have made it for years. When I tasted yours, I can't tell the difference. I'm so happy to hear that. And it's so good for you. Yes. Yeah, yes. so tell me more about it. Okay, so um, I start my cakes with almond flour, coconut flour, and um, the fat I use is avocado oil, so we're pushing the healthy fats up high, mm -hmm. and that's what makes this um, low carb. I love it. And grain free. And keto friendly, all the good stuff. All the good stuff, paleo good stuff. friendly too. Yeah. So we've already got the cake cooked because it would have taken a little too long to make that happen on TV. Yeah. But when you go to the website, you'll get the recipe for that. We're gonna make the topping right now. Right now, so we've got some butter and we have some Swerve confectioner sugar. So okay. that's a... And this is new to me. Tell me about Swerve. Swerve is a powdered erythritol. This is a United States... Uh, a company out of New Orleans mm -hmm. and does not spike the blood sugar is safe and you can read a lot about it on my site because people ask me about why you swerve what's nice is it's a sweetener that they also make a confectioner sugar and that's what we're using today okay so we're gonna put in some heavy cream we put butter we put cocoa we're gonna get this um, just up to a little bit of a boil. What's nice about this cake is you can make this ahead you can freeze this oh, nice. or you can just make it the day before when you have company you just get this out it takes about a minute and you're going to see that it takes about a minute to make it and then you just pour it over and you're ready to serve oh, that's it. great yeah because i think a lot of people have trouble frosting cakes beautifully oh i understand yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this one is super easy you just pour it super right super easy now um i've got everything in here and i'm going to add vanilla at the last second we can start to turn the stove off well let me just get okay. this a little bit Put a little bit of salt. And then, then the, of course, you add nuts if nuts is what pecans. you want. Pecans. Yeah. You have to have, well, you don't have to, but I, I've had people order without, but yeah. the pecans really makes it. And optionally, you can add unsweetened coconut if coconut oh, is yeah. your thing. Oh, that'd be nice. So let's get this just up and boiling just a tiny bit. So tell me about the other things that you cook, because you actually cook for people, um, fabulous baked goods that are all healthy. 